Alrighty guys, welcome back. This is Freddy with Freddy Can Fly and in today's video we are going to be finishing up the Setup Wizard series for the Spirit Wave radio system and the Spirit W1. If you haven't seen the previous two segments, um, please go back and review those in the playlist if need be. Um, that way you can make sure you're up to the same point. We're on the final few steps of the Setup Wizard where we're going to be going and doing the rudder portion. So up until this point, you guys, if you followed along, everything on the front end should be completed. We're now on the back end on the rudder. This one's always kind of a hard topic to get on camera, so I'm going to try to explain this the easiest way that I can, okay? So the first menu that, that we're in on the setup wizard is going to be wanting us to check. It says here, um, if the tail is moving in the correct direction, okay, so with most helicopters, tail slider should move closer to the tail boom um, after moving stick to the right. The easiest way that I found to do this, guys, is if the tail is facing away from you, so uh, let's say my midsection is down this way, right, my stomach, and here's the tail, so it's facing away from me. If I give left rudder stick, right, left command on my, on my rudder stick, my um, slider should want to move um, to the right, and if I want, and if I move it right, my slider should move left, so to speak, okay? So um, I hope that makes sense, guys. So, so again, from the camera angle here, if this was your midsection, your stomach, right, and it was right against the, the, the end of the, the tail hub, when I move left rudder, I should get um, right movement mechanically, and when I move right rudder on the transmitter, I should get left movement mechanically, okay? That means we're flying the nose of the helicopter, so left rudder would mean that the nose of the heli is moving to the left, okay? In some cases, guys, if your rotor's on the other side or you have um, a different mechanical setup of some sort where torque pulls you the opposite way, whatever the case is, just know that you could reverse this accordingly just simply by pressing the reverse button feature here. But in my case, left rudder is going to give me right movement and right rudder is giving me left movement, okay? I'm hoping that I'm explaining that to you guys. And the way I make it make sense is with the gyro correction, okay? So just for a conversation's sake, uh, match that up as needed based upon your machine's mechanics there and then we can go ahead and let's move over to this next menu now this one again i always try my darnest to stay at a complete zero percent i don't know why but sub trims and and tail gyros just have not gotten along over the ages um, but it wants us to use a sub trim to get the the rudder servo arm at the right angle um, and then it wants that it specifies here that it wants to um once you get the blades and push rod adjusted, um, it wants you to have about a three to four uh, degree pitch offset on the tail. Um, most models nowadays are built to where, you know, when, you're, when your slider is dead center, wherever um, that might be based on the mechanics, some models automatically, you're going to get even travel left and right, but you have a degree of pitch built in at center. And then some models don't, okay? So... What I usually do is I adjust my link until um, I'm, I'm dead center of travel, meaning that I have the same amount of gap on this side and that side. If it reads zero degrees, then all I got to do is make a couple of turns in or out to get me that three to four degree. And usually, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a very small offset, guys. It's not an extreme amount, and I'm assuming that's just to counteract for the torque on the windup. Um, there can be numerous um, options, but... Based on your mechanics and how yours is set up, okay, just go ahead and read this screen carefully. I am going to play around with as many servo horns humanly possible to find a perfect 90 and not have to use electronic subtrims. If you wish to use subtrims for yours, go ahead and do so. Feel free to leave down in the comments how your experience worked. Um, but I've never used them on any fly barless systems, and today is not the day to begin, at least not for me. So... I know that this is already going to work fine as is, so let's complete this step. We are almost finished here, you guys. Uh, the very last step it wants us to do is the uh, maximum rudder servo deflection. Now, this one kind of threw me for a loop for a minute, but you'll notice I'm moving my, my rudder stick left and right. Nothing is happening, and I don't know why. Well, what it wants you to do is independently select each one. And what it's going to do is it's going to take it to that amount of travel. So, for example, I'm going to click on my left one here. You'll see how it moves the rudder in its uh, direction. If I select the other one, it moves it, okay? So all we're doing with this, guys, is that same concept, is I want you to just go ahead and increase this number, increase or decrease, 
um, until you hear a little bit of binding. In my case, mine needs quite a bit. There we go. So I'm binding. I'm going to back it down to 160. And now I'm not getting any binding right there. Okay, so let's go to my other side. Again, mine has that little bit of a pitch offset in it. So these numbers may not match up identical as if um, I had a zero degree at, at center. Okay, so let's go ahead and increase this one. Keep going, keep going. It's got quite a bit to travel here. Oop, there we go. Okay, so we're starting to buzz right there. And boom. Okay, so I landed at a 180 on the left and a 160 on the right. Let's go ahead and select it. No buzzing. And no buzzing. I'm happy with those results, guys. They meet the, the mechanics that I need. It's probably going to have a lot of tail throw, so that's cool. Let's go ahead and go to the next menu, guys. And here we go. Base model setup is finished. They do recommend that we set the rudder gains at a 50% for the first test hover. I'm going to set mine at 52. That's always been my magic number. Um, if setup and model conditions is according manual, it is now safe to fly. So it specifies on there. So we can simply hit done. And we return right here back to home. Alrighty, you guys, so a couple of last minute thoughts before you do go out and attempt to do your first initial test flight, okay? Um, thing number one is I went ahead and did a power cycle, you know, powered it off, powered off the transmitter, let everything boot back up. And I like to check, let's, let's make sure everything is working. Um, let's check our collective, okay? We've got our full collective range right there. Wash plate looks like it's traveling very nice and level. Again, our rudder, I know you can't see the rudder, but let's go ahead and move our rudder around. No binding, no buzzing. And let's go ahead and check all of our um, deflections on our cyclic, all the way up and all the way down. And everything appears to be working. Now, before you ever fly a fly barless helicopter, regardless of if the system says, hey, you're good to go or not, let's check our gyro correction directions, okay? So the way we're going to do that, as I went ahead and just put myself at about half stick, it doesn't matter if you're at full negative or not. Um, I am in throttle hold. So what you're going to want to do, guys, is check the tilting of the swash and also the direction correcting movements for the rudder. Easiest way to do that, guys, is I'm going to lift up the model. When I tilt the model forward, the swash plate should manually adjust backwards. If I tilt backwards, it should move forwards. If I move it right, it should go left, left, right. Essentially, it should remain uh, on a level plane regardless of how I maneuver or um, manipulate the machine. Okay, so let's give you an example here. If I go forward, it goes backwards. See how that's remaining level at all times? I know it's really hard to catch on camera, guys, but um, you'll notice it'll recenter after a few seconds. So just go ahead and give it a forward. Going backwards, backwards, forwards. Everything looks good. So that means when I go to take off the heli, it shouldn't just flop right over on me. So we know our corrections are right there. On the rudder, again, it can be kind of a tricky one to capture, but um, the rudder is kind of the same concept, guys. Um, what I like to do is you'll notice if I give full left rudder, which means my slider goes all the way over to the right, this would mean I'm now in a left rudder, right? So my nose is going to the left. So if I move the heli with the nose to the left, we should automatically see this counter to the other side, which it does. Okay, so we now know that that is correcting in the right orientation as well. And at this point in time, I would now say, yes, it is safe to go ahead and go out and attempt your first test flight. Um, one thing I want to show you guys, if we jump over into the radio real quick, um, is that last menu, it talked about your gains, setting them at about a 50%. Okay, my gyro gain right now, um, is going to be set at 52. It's just kind of what I usually prefer. Um, it's, it's a good starting point. I feel like that 50% is going to give you a little bit of, of leeway. But it, if you want to start at 50, start at 50, guys. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and set mine to 52. Uh, in our gain, in our gyro menu, mine's going to be tied to my flight mode switch, which means as I go through my different flight values, right, um, 
I'll go ahead and set my gain value there, 52. Now, if you want to change yours, you can. You can change the channels, the uh, the flight switches, and everything else. But I like to make sure that that's set up and good to go. And then also, guys, if you need to manipulate or change any of your throttle or pitch curves, um, that's actually going to be done in model select setup. I always say model select, sorry. And then one screen over, we've got we can set up our three different flight modes if we want. Um, if you're using nitro, you've got throttle and stuff. That's also for your throttle curves electric. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and all those other additional pre, you know, pre-test flight setups. But in this particular case, guys, my model is completely ready to fly. Uh, I'm going to go out and we'll, of course, do some uh, videos on what to do at the field, how to fine-tune the machine. Because now that we've got the bench work done, all we've got to do is get it up in the air and uh, see what kind of adjustments and things we can really get out of it to make it feel like home. So... I want to thank you guys so very much for watching um, this series and these tutorials. I'm going to be posting a lot more as I get to utilize the, um, the Spirit Wave and the W1 a little bit more out at the field. If you have any questions or concerns, guys, leave them down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, please share the video for those out there that might have questions uh, that maybe don't know where my channel's at. So, uh, as always, guys, thank you so very much for your help and support and for watching. And remember... I'll never get tired of that feature of this radio. Thanks for watching, you guys.